Fuse UK. It's much appreciated as always. Tonight's guest, we've got the main man behind everything that's happening in the BKFC UK, behind making all the matchmaking, the fights, putting the fights together, the venues, everything is down to the main man, Andy Bergwell. What's happening, mate? You good? There's my... There you <laughs> yeah, right, mate? Yes. Yeah, I'm good, mate. How are you? I'm all good, mate. How's things? Yeah, yeah, sound, mate, sound. Yeah, just, um, yeah, busy. Yeah, I can imagine, mate, obviously, chock-a-block with just the shows in the BKFC UK the, every other month now, aren't they? Yeah, every two months, mate, we've got shows going on, moving them all over the country, so it's, it's, um, it's exciting times. It is, mate, definitely. I was wondering if we could start, mate, by just talking about the Crystal Palace show and what your thoughts were on the event as a whole. Yeah, I thought Crystal Palace were brilliant, mate. There were some absolutely brilliant fights on. Um, everybody, to be fair, from like the first undercard fight all the way to the end, everybody put on an absolute cracking performance. People like Kyle Cassidy versus um, Jimmy Miller. Miller. That was an unreal fight. Just a great fight to get the, the night started. Just, uh, it set the tone for the entire event, really, because everybody kind of seen what <laughs> was the, the standard was set, wasn't it? It was just a great show. Of, they were just... They both went at it and they were not quitting them. Yeah, that's the type of lads you want, don't you? Fighting on the shows, for like example, George Fort versus Jamie Andrew Fort first. I think he broke his hand, didn't he? Fucking yeah, giving lads like that, they're, they're pretty inexperienced fighters, but they've obviously got a lot of potential. Um, just giving them the opportunity in the States to sort of just build the prof build the profiles and just move forward as a fighter themselves. I mean, J Jamie Andrew came in at last minute for us, he slept in literally the day's notice because. His original, um, George's original opponent let us down last minute. Um, so Jamie came in to be fair to him, did made a real good account of himself considering he'd not been in the gym for about two weeks and I think he'd been living a pretty wild lifestyle in the two weeks leading up to it. Yeah, was it was he meant to be fighting on it originally, Jamie Andrew? Again, Franco yeah, he was supposed to be fighting uh, Franco Tanaglia, but Franco decided to take a fight within two weeks of the actual event, which we yeah. couldn't use him. We would have been sure to have him on the show if something would have happened to him. It would have been us that we got in trouble for it. Yeah, definitely, mate. And uh, what a performance by uh, Nathan Hand and Gary Fox, by the way, to say was Gary was fighting. Yeah. There's a few weights above, one not for Gary? Like, the original. Yeah, it was a big, it was a tall order for Gary. Um, I don't think anybody was expecting Nathan to be it was quite sharp and um, methodical as it was, to be fair. Nathan was really impressive, but Gary didn't take anything away from Gary because Gary put a great performance. He, he applied the pressure of the entire fight. Um, yeah. It was just a very clinical performance off Nathan. Uh, I think you was like, expect big things from both fighters, to be fair, going forward. Yeah, definitely, mate. I think uh, Gary is going to be fighting a featherweight or something now, isn't he? Yeah, he's dropping down. He's, it's a bit, he should be fine that way anyway. Um, he just didn't know how his weight was going to sit. When he folks, he hasn't been out, he's been out of the gym for so long. Um, so I think we're getting down to 66 kilo now. Uh, I think he'll be a handful for anybody that way. I think, I think you're gonna see some yeah. big fights moving forward from it. Um, Gary Fox, yeah, definitely, mate. And Chaz Wasserman fight that was a fucking yeah, that was good, to be fair, wasn't it? yeah, yeah, that was one of the best fights I've seen, to be honest with you. Just both of them, just the way it went, just back and forth, just just. Didn't know how it was going to pan out, did you? Um, and Chas, Chas has got great personality. He's a very marketable guy, isn't he? Um, Definitely. Tough, tough boots, and he can box. So, and to be fair, um, Cedric did, is a he fought, Yeah, he'd say it'd be great to see him back on another card. Yeah, he? to be fair, mate, somebody we'd definitely have back on because he was a great character, wasn't he? Yeah, he's quality. Like, like, really impressive performance. He's one of the lads, one of them lads as well, and he was just going to fucking fight until he's fucking shot. Yeah, yeah, that was it. Was an unreal fight. That was my fight of the night, to be honest with you. What What did you think of uh, Ben Bonner's performance? It was from yeah, a it was yeah. yeah, it was good. It did really well. Ben Bonner did great. He's um, he boxes well. Um, his opponent came in last minute again. Look, short notice after we got let down. We had a few people let let us down in the last three days. It's just made it hard work to try and make suitable fights, but we did it in the end. Um, yeah, but Ben again after the last minute change of opponent put a real good performance. I think it took me a while to sort of find his feet as, as soon as he sort of did. It's, he, he stopped his opponent with some great body shots. Yeah, just, he, he hurt him and just carried on attacking that same spot. It's really great plan. Yeah, and what what fighter would you say made the biggest statement on that card? Um, I don't know. Just do, do that many. That sort of put really impressive performance. And like, um, 
Cal Cassidy, Jimmy Miller and Cedric um, Seravac versus Chaz Wasserman were the two fights that stood out for me personally. Yeah, it was fucking quality, mate. Just pure action, mate, from the beginning to the start, wasn't it? Yeah, there was who else was on there that really impressed? Um, Robbie Kennedy came in at another one who stepped in like at a week's notice. Against, yeah, against uh, Jack Draper. Against Jack Draper, and Jack Draper is just like he's, he's a qualified Jack. I think Jack's going to go on some great things, and someone who's an orthodox and confident as Robbie um, Kennedy has got to be, especially now he's dropping down to cruiserweight. It's going to be a bit of a nightmare for anyone because he's. He's got a really good kickboxing background. He comes to this world champion amateur kickbox. So I think and they're so hard to kind of <laughs> predict what they're doing. They're so unorthodox on their kickboxers, that, especially someone as tall and rangy as him. Um, I think the more his confidence goes, the more you're just going to see better performances going forward off him. Yeah, definitely. There was uh, Mason, Sean, Lee Brown as well. Yeah, Mason put on a cracking performance as well, to be honest with you. Mason was, uh, Lee's not very easy. The opponent to, to kind of look good against. He's so tall and rangy, and he's a really tough guy. He made a, had a great uh, debut performance against Billy yeah. Orphan in Newcastle. And Mason just stuck to a game plan and just did everything correct and didn't, didn't make one mistake all night. Yeah, I said to Lee, like, there's fucking, there's nothing to be worried about that loss because Mason Shaw's a very, very good fucking Mason player. Shaw's, he's one of the top guys in the country. Once he stay, if he stays at Cruiserweight, Mason, I think he's going to be up there with competing for titles soon. I think we've got him, we've got him in Newcastle against, um, I can't tell you who it is, but we've got a, a guy with a real good record coming over from Wittora fighting him. Um, he's like a five and one fighter, so it's going to be interesting to see. The Polish always come for a good fight, so. Yeah, definitely do, right. The we can't forget fucking uh, David Round and Terry Brazier. Oh, that yeah, sorry, yeah, fucking hell, I forgot about that. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that was a that was a great performance of David. Probably the best performance ever ever, ever sort of come out with. Um, it's good to see David do well, and not to say it's not good to see Terry Brazier not do well, but David's a really likable guy, and just the same sort of. He always gets put into a fight, David, and um, always puts on a good performance, and he came through. A great result. Yeah, it was a whip. I don't think I think everybody was expecting that to go the distance when and both but it was just the call. Yeah, I was surprised yeah. it stopped when it did, to be honest with you. I thought it was just gonna be five round wall, to be fair. It's just mainly because David is usually involved in five round walls and on the back of Terry Bray's performance against um, Danny Christie. I think yeah. I think we found out afterwards um Terry had a bit of a dodgy hand or something going into it, but he just he didn't look particularly comfortable in there. I don't know what had gone on in his camp. It just I think he tried box rather than to actually get stuck in a fight as he usually does. Um, yeah. That's kind of what he was saying after it, which you know, was the main difference in there. Yeah, and obviously the main main card was uh Conatini versus Jake Lindsay. What was your thoughts on that fight and uh, the way it, it ended? Was, it was a great fight, two real top level guys. I mean Connor's a top lad and he's one of the top fighters in the country. He's just he's paved the way for a lot of the fighters over here. Um he's just but he's Fighter should be looking up to see what Connor does. Um, yeah. he markets himself well. He's, he trains. He's a top level fighter. Um, it was a shame he wasn't given a bit longer by the referee. But again, the, the referees have got a tough job sometimes trying to work out on a split second. Like right, if the guy's good to go or not. So I mean, he can't always. He gets better a lot from the referees. But they are top level referees. They're not like guys just bringing off the street. The, the top of the yeah. get referees. Yeah, and obviously not taking nothing away from Jake because he's a great guy as well, Jake. And he, and he even openly said on the mic after it, he'd give Connor the rematch and that. And he's another great fighter, mate. Yeah, it is, mate. Yeah, um, I think Connor's going to get another shot. Right. Top ranked fighter pretty soon, I think. I think he's in talks with David at the minute about going over to America doing some stuff. Lovely. Which he deserves, you know what I mean? He, he, he should have been allowed to carry on. There wasn't a lot in that fight anyway. They both were one knock down each, and it just he, he looked confident, he looked happy enough when he got back on his feet. He was just tired. It was a tough fight. Yeah. <laughs> men fight, mate. Every like I was dying to just run up for a drink, but every fight, like you couldn't leave. I couldn't leave. My yeah, face. mate. This is that's what I love about this. This putting these fights together it's just you don't want to miss any of them because you just don't know how they're going to pan out it's not like you can look at any one of them on cat on, on paper and think um you know how it's going to actually pan out Didn't, nine times out of ten they never go the way you think they're going to go yeah it's just a, they're, all, they're all 50 50 fights we want 50 50 fights we, want, we don't see much point in putting on fights you look on paper like pro boxing where you know who's going to win 
we don't want the sport to become that. Yeah, definitely, mate. You don't you you don't want fighters getting in the ring and just walking through people. To... Nobody gets anything out of that. It's just mismatches, just a waste of everyone's time. I mean, it, it just benefits nobody, especially at this level. This is the, the top level of bare knuckle fighting. Um, so lads should be fighting 50 50 fights constantly. It's, it, this isn't pro boxing, this is sort of more like the UFC, where you sort of put who you're giving who's you take who's point in front of you, basically. Yeah, you have to, mate. And uh, obviously, we've got BKFC 40 coming up on the 22nd of April in Leeds. How are you feeling about this show, mate? And who else can you tell us who's on the undercard? Um, yeah, I can't wait to watch it, to be honest with you. Um, Mint. There's going to be some crazy fights. Let me just have a quick look at the card. Um, yeah, this uh, unreal. Danny Christie, Anthony Holmes is the fight everybody wants to see. Um, it's the biggest fight in bare knuckle boxing at the minute in the UK, definitely. Um, I think the winner of that's going to some really big things. I mean, Danny's a lot less experienced and he's, he's come up through the sort of rankings pretty quick, but he's made a, some massive statements. There's yeah. no question in his ability. But Anthony Holmes is a lot more experienced, he's, he's competed at the highest level already. Um, it's going to be interesting to see how Danny copes, but uh, Danny's one of the most confident guys you'll ever meet. He's, he's, his self beliefs there. His, um, and his abilities as well. I think it's going to be a great clash of styles. Um, Holmes is he's, he's one of the top boys in the country. We're following Anthony Holmes from his um, when he was five for the other company. Um, he's just got a great style, but he's, he's tough as they come as well. He's, he's just a decent bloke. It's, it's going to be interesting to watch a pair of them two go at it. He's one of the most decorated um, bare-knuckle fighters in the UK as well, isn't he? Yeah, he is, yeah. He's, he's, he's like a very standout fighter, that man. He's uh, had some impressive performances over the years. Um, there's not many that, that can compete with him. He's, 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 there's nobody that cruise away that's kind of achieved what he has up to now. No, definitely not, mate. And before... Just as this fight got announced, there was a bit of a no one knew whether it was at light heavy or cruiser, whether the belt was on the line. Can you just explain to everyone what's actually happening with this fight and for the winner? Yeah, they're staying at cruiserweight, they're just going to meet at the lower end of cruiserweight. Um, so Holmes is belt still on the line, so I think they're going to come in at the bottom end of it, maybe about 85 kilo. Um, it's just still a cruiserweight fight. Then I think once the winners, I think both of them, to be fair, after this, are going to go drop down to light everywhere. That, that was both the plans. Yeah. Sweet. And um, do you think they'll get pushed up in the rankings and uh, shot at anything else after this fight? Well, the winner's going to go on to fight the, whoever's got the light everywhere title. So the, Lorenzo. Home, I, don't know they, I think they've got some plans for Holmes at the minute. Um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure who it's going to be, but I think whoever's got the belt, whoever wins out of Danny and uh, Anthony, is going to get a shot at the title over in America as well. Okay, now that'll be amazing, mate. This fight, we want to see the top lads in England going over there competing against the top boys in America. This is what it's all about. This is what people want to see. They want to see the crossover fights, they want to see the guys going over there and taking on the best of the best. Yeah, because it's, it's fights like this, mate, that change fucking fighters' lives, isn't it? Like it, it changes the lives, mate, things like this. But they sacrifice a lot, especially the lads at this level. They they do they take everything really seriously. They, they put all the time to, into training. They sacrifice all the part in the family time and stuff. And then they're fully committed to training. They do everything right. Marketing-wise, you, you can't knock anything these guys do at that sort of level. And guys looking to get to where these guys sort of are. Should be looking up to them, seeing what they're doing to get there. Yeah, and we've got uh, is it Luke Nevin and Franco Tenalia. They're still fighting each other. Yeah, mate. Yeah, that's going to be a good fight. Luke, I'm interested to watch Luke make his debut for us. To be honest with you, he's, he's been quite impressive down at um, his former company. Um, yeah. Franco Tenaglia is no muppet, though. He's a crazy guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, he's, I like Franco. He's a, he's a really he's a really nice bloke. But once he's in there, he's uh, he switches on uh, massively. He's a uh, he's, he's scared of no man that fella. No, definitely not, mate. And Rico Franco is going to be fighting on the show as well against. How would you pronounce his second name? Is it Berbers? Berbers, yeah, Axel Berbers. And who who else is going to be fighting on the undercard? I've uh, got Robbie Ken Kennedy fighting um, uh, ex-Irish pro boxer called Connor Cook. Oh yeah, Connor Cook's fighting on it as well. Um, yeah. 
It's a really good fight that I'm going to look out for. Tom Scott's fighting um, a Gromda fighter called Highlander. Who's, yeah, who's yeah. He's obviously been involved in wars. He's just a really battle hardened guy. He's a really tough bloke. So that's going to be really interesting to watch. Um, Lee Brown's fighting a former BFBA fighter called Tony Astora from Germany. Yeah. That should be interesting. They're both fairly inexperienced, but very similar in styles and height. So it should be good to watch. Um, Got a few interesting guys coming in as well. A guy, guy called Jonathan Graham. He's spoke really highly over around the Leeds area. He's supposed to be a good local talent that people have put forward. Um, we've got people like Morgan Starkey, Dexter Thomas, uh, Rob Cunningham's fighting a guy called uh, Matt Shippen. Oh, yeah, yeah. And he's a big guy, him, that Matt, and he. Fuck me. Yeah, Scott Matt's Shippen, he's no, he's he's absolutely huge. He's about 140 kilo, six foot oh, eight. He's no. <laughs> <laughs> not fun padding him. And then because they're just two absolute giants. Yeah, crazy. He's, he's been wanting to fights with like people his own size and that. Rob hasn't he? I've been looking at it. Yeah, it's fair to, I mean, to, him and Matt's a really good 50 50 fight. They're both fairly novice fighters. They've both had similar sort of amount of fights. Matt's never fought bare knuckle before, but he was training for lift way bouts before. Yeah, um, this opportunity came up, and I just thought he'd make a good fight. You got uh, Naf Higson on the show as well. Yeah, Naf's a, Naf's a nice lad, and he's um, he he had a real good fight against George Fort back in you know, one of the old BFBA shows. So <laughs> I know he's been training really hard for it as well, Naf. So it'd be nice to see. He's just a decent bloke, Naf. So uh, I always thought if, if an opportunity comes comes up on a show local enough to him, we'll try and give him an opportunity. Yeah, he's fighting a kid out of uh, Rico Franco's Jiminy. Yeah, he is, mate. Yeah, uh, Aaron Blakely is fine. Um, yeah, again, he's, had a, he's had a couple of MMA fights. It's super you know, experienced guys, but again, it's important that we still you know, sort of on the prelim fights. We give the lesser experienced guys a, a platform to sort of come in and like build the profiles. Yeah, definitely. And obviously, the main card: Elvin Brito versus a uh, highly decorated boxer, f- former professional and amateur Commonwealth gold medalist Jamie Cox. Yeah, I think it's been a massively underrated fight, to be honest with you. I think just the fact that Elvin Brito's coming over, fight, fighting Jamie Cox. I've been holding Jamie Cox for years in his pro boxing days, and he's just built for bare knuckle boxing. He's, um, yeah. He just comes for a war every time. He's, he's such a good bloke as well. as um, Giving Elvin Brito is going to be an absolute tear up. It's a, it's a baptism of fire that he's got fighting Elvin because Elvin's very, I don't think he's, he's, he's ever fought kind of at the level. Jamie Cox has, but he's definitely a very unpredictable fighter. And, uh, he's very unorthodox, isn't he? Um, yeah, he's, he's got very experienced bare knuckle boxer as well, man. It's going to prove the difference in in the actual fight because where Jamie's never competed in bare knuckle boxing, he's he's coming against coming against one of the most experienced guys about in it. Yeah, and obviously, um, for people who don't know, Elvin Brito is former world champion, and obviously, he's fought the likes of Louis Palomino and. 50 50 close fights where it could have went either way, so he's no divvy, is he? No, not at all, mate. Not at all. I think Brito was an absolute machine. Um, yeah, it's gonna be, it's gonna be great to see Jamie Cox. It's, it's great that Jamie's sort of just said, Look, I'll, I'll take that fight. Yeah, definitely. And for people watching now who want to go to uh, BKFC 40 in uh, Leeds on the 22nd of April. Where can where's the best room to purchase the tickets other than the fighters through social media? You can get the fighters through the BKFC uh, website, or you can get through Eventbrite. The link on there, or if you go on the Instagram, the social media pages, there's links and the, the profiles to get onto the ticket sales. Sweet. And after BKFC Leeds, we've got BKFC Newcastle. Is that on the yeah? We're back, yeah, we're back up in Newcastle. Um, we've got some top lads lined up to fight on that. I think I've just been talking to David about potential headline fight, which if he pulls that off, it's going to be um, something really special. I can't really say much about that, but that's a fight everybody's going to want to watch. So I'm hoping that gets, we're going to know in a few days whether that fight's going to take second place or not. Uh, but the, under, the undercard's already confirmed. They're going to be contacting all the lads tomorrow. Um, Cushy. It's cracking on with getting all the contracts in place and stuff like that because the undercard's looking great at the minute. So um, got Cal Cassidy back on, Mason Shaw back on, um, Gary Fox is on again, Lewis Keane's coming back. Nice. Um, who else we got on? Simon Hendrickson's coming over. So, the king of the streets, lad. Yeah, yeah. Fought and Gromder and that as well, Annie. 
Yeah, Simon's coming over. He signed a free a free fight contract with us now. Um, we've got wow. to fight um, another football like football hooligan sort of guy from Germany, a guy called Gosch Jews, who was supposed to be fighting on um, uh, BFBA years ago. Um, yeah. Who else? I'm mean, on Jack Draper's back on. Um, a few Aggie Fulton's back on. He made an impressive oh, Fulton, yeah. in, his, um, in his debut and the first. Did he in a heavyweight, or did he go down to cruiserweight? Is it? No, we were trying to push him down to cruiserweight because of the size of him, but he's, <laughs> he can't get the weight down. He's going to be coming in about hundred kilo. I think that's going to be the way it's going to stick out now. He's just a tank, in it? Yeah, the powerhouse, mate. Them shots he was short shot on at Newcastle. Yeah, he's just a very right. explosive power. Uh, yeah, he's he's going to fucking... He'll, he's, he's going to be interesting to see how far he goes, because I think he's got a lot of potential. I get to be honest with you. I think he's, um, he's very explosive, and in this game, he's um, good building up correctly. No, I think he can go quite far, I get, I get. Yeah, Lewis Keane as well, mate. I think he's a very bright prospect, mate, in this game. Yeah, mate. He, yeah, the Americans are impressed with Lewis. Um, I did a message him during the actual fight, but saying how impressed with him. He just boxes really well, considering he's a K1 fighter as well. Um, he's, he's just very clean, crisp boxer, isn't he? Yeah, dead, very confident as well, mate. Yeah, mate, yeah. I think I think we're going to see some big things from him going forward as well. I think he's got... A, I'm trying to set up... I can't say who he's going to be fighting now, but I'm trying to set up with another sort of young prospect around the same sort of age, both similar sort of age weights. Um, it's going to make sense to see, see who the best sort of up-and-coming young fighter in the country is. Yeah, class. And obviously, while we're on the topic of Newcastle, what, have you heard any news on what's happening with Mick Terrell? Um, I, I think Davidson talks for him at the minute. Um, I can't really say much more about that at the minute. But I, I know there's going to be an offer on the table for one way or another. I know David's, David's on now. David's dealt with him from day one. So David, yeah, he's, he's, still, he's still in the title contention and all that, isn't he? Yeah, of course he is, mate. I think they've got... Oh, um, I think they're looking at putting a fight with Belcher with somebody else first because it's, it's a fight they want to make. So whoever Mick takes so uh, there's another fight there for Mick that I think's going to I think he's going to want anyway um, but I should know more in the next couple of days with that. I just I only got told about it today to be honest with you so yeah no worries man <laughs> is, is there any other places that you haven't been where you plan on going in the UK for future shows <laughs> yeah we've got Cardiff planned for um, September that's going to be a massive show we've got like really big plans for that we've got like a real top end um, X Pro Fighter coming over. Um, it's going to be really, it'll be the biggest name that we've brought over up to now, anyway. Um, well, will, it, will it be a, is he a boxer or an MMA? Uh, boxer. Nice. Yeah, just, uh, but the, the, the Wells card's looking great. We've been planning that for, in the background for a bit, and I've got just plenty of real top level Wells fighters all scratching to get on. Um, it's going to be good to have a finally home show they can they'll fight on. Yeah, will James, James Lilly be headlining that? He'll be, yeah, he'll be up there, yeah. Yeah, Cushy, mate, that's good yeah, to hear. James getting a big fight for that one. Nice, and is there any signings in the pipeline, what you can tell us? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. no uh, the, the, uh, from the talks I had with David today, though, um, I think there's some like, really, really big like UK fights potentially happening. Um uh, there's some there's some big things going on in the background. Um, I've got about three really big names that we're potentially signing at the minute, and I know David's in talks with some like fucking household name. So it's, uh, it's going to be big things over the next twelve months in BKFC UK. It's going to be um, just blowing it out of the water. To be honest with you, so um, it's just I mean we, we're looking to compete with pro boxing and the UFC. That, we're not that, that's the competition for the company. Must be a good feeling, mate, seeing all the hard work like you, Hannah, and the guys and that put in, mate. And at the end of the night, seeing the pro production and all the people in there who've, who, when you've promoted it for them all to come and just seeing how much of a good job you have done. Yeah, I'll, yeah, it's, it's great because it, it takes a lot of hard work over the months leading up to it. Then just when, when we get down there, it's a um, stressful few days. Uh, so I'm, I, I'm usually happy when the fight starts and I can just kind of sit back and just. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, everybody, the entire team works absolutely 
tireless so day in there um just to get everything done but everything's planned to an absolute t um it's great that the americans have got the confidence in us to put more money into production and just have it as like a just a branch of the the same the same franchise in america um david's been nothing but helpful to me um anytime i need some advice or need sort of suggestions about what to do on certain things is i can he can oh i can always call him it's same with nick chapman over in thailand they're both great blokes and they're just uh, having two guys like that so sort of, just to advise me on anything i need um is a massive help yeah and of course having people associating with people like that it makes your job a lot easier and enjoyable doesn't it instead of dating them people yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's just it's just it's a massive achievement for myself to be sort of taken seriously by these guys because they're the two of the biggest promoters in the game um so for all the hard work we've done over the years for my old company just to get some recognition finally sort of get a chance to compete with the big boys it's um yeah it's, it's, yeah. it's a big, big promoters, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but obviously as well with the fighters that you're saying that are wanting to sign over these big names you're going to get more people wanting to come over now with the likes of what they're doing in the usa with luke rock all daddy Alv, all these massive names coming over yeah i think it's just going to snowball now i think over the next 12 months i think you're going to see some absolutely huge names coming over i think more of the uk side of things is going to take off as well to be honest i think seeing some of these big names coming over to the uk next is probably the next big thing for them yeah, I see. I seen it, um, an MMA page, like a, a well-known MMA page, they released a bit of news. I, I'm not going to say it in case it's not supposed to be out. But uh, yeah, I know, uh, what I know what you're saying. I've seen it myself. English fighter meant to be fighting the winner of uh, Brock and that. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm not sure what truth's in it to be honest with you, but um, I know he has been. I know there's been talks between them. Um, I think it is something that could possibly happen in the future. I'm just not sure exactly. Where he's up to with things. Yeah, you can't, you can't, you can't uh, count on that until the actual page. No, page yeah. 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 Can, yeah. There have been talks with plenty of people, but I know David's going to see that as somebody he definitely wants to sign off. And I know he's, he's mentioned a few names, um, a real big household names that he's in talks with the minute that he's going to be bringing over as well. So it's going to be exciting times, definitely going forward. This, um, they, they're sounding fully legit. They're not just like has been UFC fighters. They're just they've been at the top like recently you know yeah nobody else in bare fighting's coming anywhere near to bringing these sorts of fighters in there's not even there's nobody competing anywhere near that level now so it's crazy how people are still considering themselves competition it's like they're, they're you'd need anywhere. only what you'd need only one of them names and you the the blow like fucking any other from walking out of the water. It's crazy, mate. It's crazy. They just, they just said the, 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 the winning by a country mile, mate. There's not like, they're not, nobody's going to catch them up now. Just, they're, they're too far ahead. I think that, like, I'm not just saying it, mate, because I'm on a podcast for you, but I think the BKFC UK blows all the other promotions out of the water. The, the um, 50 50 <laughs> fights, production, everything. Yeah, we're really happy with how things have gone, to be honest with you. I mean, the first show was a bit of a, I thought it went really well, the first Newcastle one. Obviously, things have been tweaked production wise just because it was the first show we'd done with them. Um, yeah. And we got it right the second time. Everything was beautiful. I think it's just going to... The, the more we work with them, the, the easier things are going to get. Obviously, they, they're doing a lot of stuff over there, sometimes difficult to communicate with. Um, they work on a completely different timeline as well, with just how quick they expect they can get things done in America. doesn't always... Maybe how quick we can get things done in the UK, just because it just doesn't things take a bit more time in the uk just like fights need tickets a bit earlier and stuff like that which is just things that will get ironed out over time um and just the workload they've got over there they've got shows going on all the time so it's just it's difficult for us to kind of say right we need this announced now when they've got a crazy load of stuff getting put out yeah and it's like as well 7.99 a month as well for the app like this uh i think it's the 21st i might be wrong but obviously there's two shows on the there's two weekend. shows yeah there's two shows that weekend and there's the, the massive show the weekend after yeah it's like crazy crazy how cheap it is like when you compare it to the boxing shows and the amount of entertainment you're getting compared to what people are paying for like, it's like there's always a fight there's always a couple of fights worth watching even if you don't know anything about it, anything about it like you're relatively new to the sport 
you always look at one of the shows and there's always like the, the headline fights are always worth watching so if you've got at least a couple of them a month it's definitely worth the money and then you get to watch all the other cards as well and some cracking fighters especially in the american ones as well some of them guys go up to absolute fucking war yeah it's amazing mate it's the best seven pound 99 anyone will spend <laughs> I don't, I don't want to keep you for too long, mate, as I know you're a busy man. But is there anything else you want to share with us, Andy, before we wrap it up, mate? Um, no, not really. Uh, yeah, I just hope everyone can make the show. It's going to be one of the biggest events you've ever seen, down in the Leeds on April 22nd. But uh, I look forward to catching you up, mate, on uh, at Leeds on the 22nd. And, um, yeah, we'll have a good crack, mate. Yeah, no worries, Lou. I'll see you down there, mate. All right, Andy, mate. Thanks, Speak soon, bro. Thanks for having me on, mate. I'll see you soon. No problem, mate. See you soon, mate. Bye-bye. Thanks to everyone for tuning in there. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. It'll be much appreciated. Good night, God bless.